Our next focus, civil war and the threat of a new famine in the African nation of Ethiopia. The fear that a million or more people could die of hunger in the coming months was enough to make President Reagan call for action in his foreign policy speech delivered today in Springfield, Massachusetts. We will take up the U.S. appeal in a moment with the administrator of the Foreign Aid Agency and with Ethiopia's ambassador to the United Nations. But first, some background on a troubled nation. In 1984, a devastating drought in Ethiopia made pictures of starving children an all-too-familiar sight in the Western media. That specter has been raised again, although the international community eventually responded with massive amounts of aid, an ongoing civil war is again threatening over two million Ethiopians with starvation. Separatist movements in two northern provinces, Eritrea and Tigray, have been fighting the central government in Addis Ababa for more than 20 years. First, against the U.S.-backed regime of Haile Selassie, and in the past decade, against the Soviet-backed Marxist government of President Mengistu. In the last month, rebels in both provinces have mounted major offensive against the government and shifted the military balance in their favor. These Soviet tanks were destroyed in a recent battle in Eritrea, where the rebels claim they captured 18,000 Ethiopian soldiers. But ironically, Eritrea and Tigray are also the places in Ethiopia where the drought has been the most devastating. There are estimated to be at least two million people there who need the food flown in by organizations such as the Red Cross and UNICEF. In order to prevent food from going to the rebels, the Ethiopian government three weeks ago closed the relief operations and ordered all foreign workers to leave the two provinces. Donor countries sharply protested. U.S. State Department spokesman Charles Redman. A human catastrophe is unfolding in Ethiopia where the government has closed down the United Nations-led international relief effort. As a consequence, over two million people are facing starvation. We deplore the decisions made by the government in Addis Ababa to neglect or sacrifice millions of its citizens in pursuit of military objectives. Earlier this week, the Ethiopian government announced that it would allow a few UN relief workers to remain in Eritrea and Tigray. But there is still concern that the food distribution process has been severely disrupted by the Ethiopian government's action. In a speech today in Massachusetts, President Reagan urged the Soviets to intercede with their ally. They can stop this disaster before it happens. And I appeal to them to persuade the Ethiopian regime, as only they can, to change its decision and to allow the famine relief efforts to continue. For more on the situation, we have the Reagan administration's top aid official, Alan Woods, administrator of the Agency for International Development, and Ethiopia's ambassador to the United Nations, Tesfai Tedessa. Ambassador Woods, first of all, how serious is the food shortage in Ethiopia? Well, it's very serious. The, uh, the famine is estimated to affect uh, five to seven million people countrywide. And about 40% of those are in the uh, areas of Eritrea and Tigray, which is where the fighting is taking place. So uh, we would uh, estimate that uh, right now, uh, approximately one million people who were receiving food in February are not receiving food now as a result of the actions to remove the foreign relief workers from the northern part of Ethiopia. What part has the government of Ethiopia played in, in the food shortage problem in, in the view of the United States? Well, there are, there are three factors which have affected food shortage in Ethiopia. One is the drought, and that, and that is certainly a, a neutral uh, activity in a political sense. The second is the fact that a war is going on there. Uh, and for, for that, both the Ethiopian government and the, the rebel groups uh, deserve uh, a share of blame. And the third is, frankly, Ethiopian economic policies, which uh, have caused less food to be grown than might otherwise have been the case if, uh, if they had more appropriate uh, agricultural policies. 
Ambassador Tedessa, your reaction? Ambassador Tedessa, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Uh, your reaction to Ambassador Wood's comment that part of the reason for the food shortage are the, are the policies of your government? Well, I don't know how one can come to this kind of conclusion. Uh, most of the areas that are adversely affected by drought, and which become recurrent victims of the uh, climatic changes, are areas that have been uh, uh, settled for a very long time whose soils and fertility has been depleted and uh, because of the also of the nature of rather old style agriculture and production uh, we were not able uh, even before to uh, be self-sufficient in food and since the revolution the government has in fact uh, taken measures to give land to the tillers, to the peasants that farm it. The land policy has been encouraging because now the farmers are able to own their own land and to farm either individually or in cooperation with other farmers. But what is needed is, of course, a favorable climatic condition, of course, uh, full stability, and also the change in the uh, mode of agriculture, in the mode of production, by way of introducing new technology and new inputs and so, education and training, which is being done to a large extent, but which requires time. So you're saying your government is playing no role through its policies in the food problems? Certainly not. The government in no way can uh, take measures or can act to be a deterrent to the development of its people and of its country. Ambassador Woods? Well, the issue today is not, uh, is not the Ethiopian government policies with regard to agriculture. The, Ethi the issue today is the Ethiopian government policies with regard to humanitarian relief in northern Ethiopia. The fact is that the Ethiopian government has forced uh, foreign relief workers, uh, members of the International Committee of the Red Cross, uh, people uh, from the uh, Catholic Church relief agencies, uh, people from the United Nations out of the north and, uh, and uh, has required them to leave that area. And the question is why? Uh, these people have been working in the northern part of Ethiopia f since, uh, since this famine began. They have uh, risked their lives and were fully prepared to continue to do so. Uh, we've had uh, the rebels have indeed shot up uh, uh, transports of, uh, of food uh, throughout the country. We know that. Uh, the relief agencies that are operating there know that and they're fully prepared to take those risks. What they, what they ask for is the ability to have an open roads, own risk policy where they can continue to deliver food to the Ethiopian people who are in risk. need at their own risk. What about that, Ambassador Tedessa? Uh, why has your government forced these relief people to leave? No, the government has not forced anybody to leave. Uh, you all are very, are, are very well aware of the fact that we have some problems in the northern part of our country because of some terrorist activities by secessionist elements. This has been intensified and therefore the government has a responsibility to see that international relief workers who have come miles from their land to support and assist the government to tackle the consequences of drought to see that their safety is ensured. So what the government did is out of consideration for the safety and security of the international personnel to ask only the expatriate staff of these agencies to come to Addis Ababa and if need be monitor their activities from there. But what but it means is also the large number of Ethiopian staff working for these agencies will continue without any interruption, will continue to deliver food and assistance to the various areas. But what Neither about Ambassador Wood's point, um, Ambassador Tedessa, that these agencies are willing to accept the risk because they believe this is the only way to get food to the most number of people? No, uh, you very well appreciate, I'm sure, the uh, responsibility of any government to see that uh, international personnel working in its territory are secured. 
and this is only I think natural and also within the sphere of uh, sovereign responsibility. Can you respond to that Ambassador Woods? Well I, I can respond in several ways. First of all the International Committee of the Red Cross was set up to operate and created to operate in areas of conflict. They have traditionally done so throughout many wars uh, around the world. Uh, they have had the responsibility for delivering food to approximately one-third of the people in the northern part of Ethiopia. The fact is that today they are not allowed to operate and that one-third of the people are not receiving food that was receiving it earlier. Our estimates are that are about a million people that were, as I said, receiving food in February are not receiving it today. And unless the uh, foreign relief workers are allowed back in the north, we, we estimate that in six to eight to ten weeks, another million people won't be receiving food. Ambassador we, we face a, nas a, a truly major historic tragedy. Ambassador Tedessa, the uh, people look on the situation and cannot understand your government's decision. How do you explain it? Well, first of all, it is not all international agencies that are asked to temporarily withdraw to Addis Ababa. A large number of UN agencies are going to continue there. And as I said earlier, the local staff of all the agencies are going to continue their activities. It should be known that the Ethiopian government has, even prior to the arrival of the international agencies, NGOs or otherwise, has ex an extensive institutional arrangement to distribute food and other assistance to the needy Will people. that make a difference, Ambassador Woods? Well, in the past, and I've visited Ethiopia in December, the, the uh, Ethiopian government had uh, a responsibility for uh, distributing about one-third of the food that was being distributed in the northern part of Ethiopia. The international relief agencies, including the International Red Cross, were distributing the other two-thirds. Uh, what has happened now is with the removal of the relief agencies, those two-thirds uh, of the people that were receiving food from those agencies are now in much greater jeopardy. The, the, the Ethiopian government, as a result of a request from the UN Secretary General, has allowed uh, four uh, people from the United Nations back in the north. Uh, at least they did temporarily, but then they escorted them back out again. And, but they are not actually delivering relief food. They're basically running a logistics operation. Ambassador Tedessa, whose responsibility will it be if these people uh, are dying of starvation? First of all, there are not any people dying of starvation in that area. The government, in cooperation with other agencies, has been taking effective measures to make sure that food and assistance is delivered. Now, again, what I need to clarify here is that the recall of a very small number of expatriate staff should not be equated with the total disruption of the activities of those very agencies themselves. In addition, the government has taken the appropriate measures with a view to reinforcing the already existing mechanisms of distribution of okay. assistance. Gentlemen, I'm afraid we'll have to leave it there, but we thank you both for being with us. Ambassador Woods, Ambassador Tedessa, thank you. Thank you very much.